of two buildings in the concrete brick and steel web that dominates our metropolis, Los Angeles, is this small wedge of green, this garden, a surprise for all who happen upon it, with greater surprises yet for those who enter to work and share the joys of nurturing vegetables and flowers. My name is Liz Lubin. I'm a San Pedro resident, and I'm here in old downtown San Pedro enjoying the Urban Garden Feed and Be Fed, where I volunteer. People helping people. Well, I knew the place was here um, just because it's in my neighborhood, but I didn't really know anything about it. Once I saw the garden and understood that it was open to everyone and the people volunteered here, I thought that's something I could do. They're under the food that I gave them last week. Guess they finished that one. Yeah, I harvested 58 pounds of compost last week from the worms in my both of my bins. Because it decomposes faster, oh, if it's there broken, are more it's parts of it that are exposed to the air and the bacteria. And we want to make our compost as fast as we can. And at the end of three months, I'll show you what it's like. You think, think this is earth. This isn't earth. This is only vegetables. It's vegetables and leaves. This isn't quite finished, but it's on its way to being ready to put on the ground. Not a bit of dirt in here. The friendship began immediately with all the people here and I also began to see the other things that go on in the garden, the community outreach, uh, school children that come here and participate, other volunteers I've been able to meet, um, people that come in just curious about the garden, who come in for information, they want to grow something in their own gardens at home and they need some help, um, so they come in with questions, people come in to buy vegetables. Uh, there's just a lot of community activities going on. First Thursdays in downtown San Pedro when all the businesses are open and there's a lot of, it's like a street fair. People come in off the sidewalk and, and listen to music. And learn about the garden, and it's everyone friendly. We are reintroducing city folk to a very old friend. A friend they remember deep in their unconscious. A friend who has much truth to tell. A friend with some urgent messages for our time. We are reacquainting people with their faithful friend, agriculture. We have the world to live in on the condition that we will take good care of it. And to take good care of it, we have to know it. And to know it, and be willing to take care of it, we have to love it. This growing space was founded by Reverend Anna Wolfenden, who imagined 
a garden in the city, a sanctuary, a place open to the sky and to everyone who walked through the gates. The poet farmer Wendell Berry says sustainable communities are built on shared affection, affection for place and affection for neighbors. If we grow anything besides tomatoes and kale, it is this community building affection. In the meantime, I get a ticket for having a bedroll on the street. Food works available, you can pay rent, but you don't have no money for food. So it's sort of a ridiculous 22 is <laughs> Yeah, that's water? I'm bringing it over. Oh, that grape juice looks good too. Okay. I come into the peace of wild things who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. For a time, I rest in the grace of the world, and I am free. I'm Connie McCosker, and I got involved in the garden because I work across the street. I work for the Grand Vision Foundation. It's a unique place where people from all walks of life can be together from the rich and famous in town to our unhoused neighbors and everybody in between, between um, all races, all ages. Um, it's just a wonderful place where people uh, can learn about gardening. Um, a place to rest and reflect. My name is Amanda Riley. I'm the acting co-pastor here at the Garden Church. The Garden Church was the first of the two organizations to rent this once very empty plot of land um, and turn it into a vibrant urban garden. So our sense of welcome is broad. It is any, literally all are welcome. We say it all the time. Lots of churches say it all the time. We mean it when we say it here. I've been doing community service for the courts for about a year and a half. And I wrote a declaration and the judge said that I could work at any nonprofit. So I thought of the community garden once I was referred here. I came over here and Peter and Linda have been very nice to let me work in the garden. Okay. It's an extremely beautiful place with lots of flowers and birds and bees and all kinds of interesting colors and people that are always friendly and kind and generous and compassionate towards people like me who are also homeless and trying to find our way in society. <laughs> I did it. So they can grow more. Yeah, grow, grow. Grow, Platts, grow. Come on, let's get some more water. And here, right in the middle of San Pedro, here in the city, we have made a farm so that you guys and other people have an opportunity to see how we get our food. Food doesn't come without preparation, without work. And what we're trying to show people here is how to grow food, among other things, without chemicals. Without chemicals. A lot of food in the world today is grown with chemicals and pesticides. We're trying to avoid that because we think it's going to be healthier for adults and healthier for children as well. Did you have a question? Uh, no, don't. Don't bees make fruit and fruit makes food? Like the bees go around into the flowers 
and they help the flowers to make seeds. And if bees weren't part of our life here in San Pedro and part of the world, we would not be able to grow food the way we're able to grow it. So they're very, their bees are very, very important. And they do make a kind of food, honey. Later on, if you come back later on in the year, those tomatoes that you watered that are green are all going to be red and ripe. Um, I'm from Easter Seals, first of all, and we've been volunteering here for two and a half years since almost you opened, I believe, right around that time. And when I started, we have to find different volunteer sites, and this is their absolute favorite. We go to several different sites, and every Friday they can't wait for the garden. We wish you were open every day. <laughs> and then another group comes on Tuesday, but they enjoy coming here, picking the plants or watering, whatever is asked of them. They love to do it. We're growing plants here, but I, I, would, I would have to say the community, which is formed by the experience of working together, sharing information together, sharing the pleasure, the deep pleasure of watching the plants grow. It's a little bit like having kids. And the whole process takes place in one growing season. And, and, and I don't have to tell, I, I don't have to tell anybody who's a parent what it's like to watch your kids grow. Well, the, the young people and the old people who come in here and have that experience growing food, um, it's like raising a family.